Projectile motion. Any object released in the air is a projectile, e.g. shot or thrown. Speed of release. The greater the speed of release, the greater the horizontal distance. For example, the speed of release when taking a swing at a hockey ball will determine how fast the ball travels along the turf and how far it goes. Height of release. The greater the height of release, the greater the horizontal distance. For example, the higher you raise your stick when you swing at the hockey ball, it will determine how far the ball will travel and the speed it will reach. And finally, angle of release. There is an optimum angle of release for each object, but that will depend on a number of factors including aerodynamics of the objects and height of release. For example, the angle which the ball connects with a hockey stick determines the height and speed of the ball. E.g. if you hit underneath the ball, it will get airborne. If you hit the ball evenly on the stick, the ball will travel quite fast, flat along the turf. Forcimation. Forcimation is where a combination of forces is produced by different parts of the human body. Forcimation occurs when all body parts act together to maximise force. For example, when making contact with the ball with your stick, you are applying a force. You start with your biggest muscles first, which are my hamstrings, quadriceps, obliques and abdominals. It then works up towards the smaller muscles, which in this case are the deltoids, trapezius, biceps and triceps. These smaller muscles allow quick forceful movements as you follow through the pass. Advantages of forcemation in a hockey pass are that it allows you to apply different amounts of force on the ball, therefore getting more power into a pass. The joints I use in my hockey pass are the ball and socket joint at my hip, the ball and socket joint at my shoulder, the hinge joint at my elbow, the saddle joint in my thumb, and the pivot joints in my fingers. Disadvantages of forcemation in a pass are that if you apply too much or too little force, it won't travel at the right speed. Newton's first law. An object at rest will remain at rest unless acted upon by a force. An object in motion will remain in motion with an uniformed velocity unless acted upon by an internal or external force. In hockey, you use Newton's first law when hitting or trapping the ball. When you hit the ball, you are applying a force to the ball, which is at rest. When you trap the ball, you are stopping the ball from being in motion until you begin to dribble or pass it on. Newton's second law, law of acceleration. Force is equal to mass times acceleration. When a force is applied, it will accelerate an object according to the amount of force applied and in the direction of that force. In hockey, Newton's second law of acceleration is applied when you aim to hit the ball over a far distance. To do this, you must apply a strong amount of force. This causes the ball to accelerate at great speed. If you were to make the ball heavier, it would require much more force in order to make it accelerate forward. Newton's third law. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. For example, in a hockey pass, the action is the contact with the ball, and the opposite reaction to the action is the ball moving forward. Levers. Within a lever, there are three components. They are 1. Pivot. The point at which the lever rotates. 2. The load, the force applied by the lever system, the load to be moved, including the lever itself. And finally, the force, the force applied by the lever system, the force which causes the movement. There are three types of levers, one being the first class lever, the, which is where the pivot is between the force and the load. A second class lever is where the load is between the pivot and the force, and a third class lever is where the force is between the pivot and the load. All levers have two functions. One, increase the speed at which an object can move with a given force, and two, increase the resistance that can be moved with a given force. 
For my hockey pass, the pivot is my hands, the load is the ball, and the force is applied by my obliques, abdominals, deltoids, trapezius, biceps, and triceps. The pass is a first-class lever, which is where the pivot point is located between the force and the load. If the resistance arm is longer, the lever is better for force. In my hockey pass, this is a short gripped pass, meaning the resistance arm is long. This allows me to apply maximum force in the pass. If the resistance arm was to be shorter, the lever would be better for speed. So in hockey, a shorter resistance arm is better for quick passing, but a longer resistance arm is better for having a forceful shot down the turf. Balance and stability. Balance and stability is the ability to hold or maintain a position. The centre of gravity is the point located on an object or being where the mass is evenly distributed. The base of support is the area within an object or being's point of contact with the ground. The larger the area the base of support covers, the more stable an object will be. In hockey, when dodging a player, it means you have to stay balanced otherwise you will fall over. Balance and stability is also needed when you step into a pass. This is our dynamic balance, which is balance when moving.